all further, I'm now joined by Matthew R.J. Brodsky, a senior Middle East analyst at Wikistrat. Matthew, thanks so much for being with us. Good to be with you. Now, uh, obviously, quite the week we've had this new sanctions bill and all the reactions to it. There's speculation that these new sanctions and worsening relations will make it harder for the U.S. and Russia to work together on international issues like Syria, North Korea, where they both have joint interest. Do you think that the need to work together will override these tensions, or are we likely to see more clashes? I do. I think uh, the need to work together will actually prevail in the end. I think what the United States did by passing these sanctions is something that is quite a natural reaction. Of course, uh, uh, President Trump, like I would have to say any president from the executive branch through any type of administration, left or right, would be annoyed by a Congress that's trying to tie their hands. But this is what it is. And I think they're going to have to work together because there is no other option in Syria um, and uh, in a whole bunch of other places, including North Korea. They're going to have to work together. This actually does annoy Russia. You know, the, it, it sounded a bit like someone protesting too much on something that they're claiming has absolutely no effect. So. Now, you, as you said, this obviously annoyed Russia, and President Putin even said there will be further retaliation, although we haven't heard yet what that might be. What, what, could, what form could that take? In what way could Russia retaliate where it would hit the U.S. where it hurts? Well, I mean, it could be in the way that they're enforcing the ceasefire in Syria, but the other things that they like to do, especially if you're running a propaganda network in, in uh, Russia, is uh, with their military exercises close to Belarus, also the uh, uh, Sabre Guardian exercises that the United States are doing uh, with, with NATO. And it's, uh, you know, there, there's those type of, of situations. Um, but in the meantime, he really he benefits, of course, from having uh, the United States appear to be the bad guy in his election campaign. But at the same time, it's not like anyone really believes anyone but Putin is going to win the election. So, you know, th this whole aspect doesn't matter. It does make a difference that he pays a price. And that, that is an important difference between uh, the Trump administration and the Obama administration. Now, also, talking about moving forward from uh, these reactions that we've been hearing all week, uh, Secretary of State Tillerson is heading to a summit in Asia where the Russian foreign minister is also uh, intending to be. They'll likely be meeting each other there. Is there any sense that perhaps they'll be able to talk things out, come up with some sort of uh, way to move forward, at least from what we've been seeing this week? Well, if uh, the last frosty meeting that they had is any indication, I would say no, especially when you add the sanctions on. But then again, if you're a seasoned American diplomat, uh, you would understand that much of what Sergei uh, Lavrov says doesn't really, you know, pass the truth test, I would say. So I don't expect to see a whole lot out of there. It's a matter of if they can come up with a, uh, a new path forward or a continuation of a path forward uh, in Syria when it comes to ceasefires in certain areas, and if the Trump administration can make sure that they take care of Israel's, uh, uh, their concerns and uh, Jordan's concerns and others' concerns in the region. It's a, there's really a lot more going on behind the scenes in the Trump administration and the circular firing squad they are currently have to deal with that is probably a much bigger impact on what is going to happen in foreign policy than anything going on with Russia right now. Well, certainly, as you said, a lot of uh, concerns on both sides, Russia, the election campaign for Vladimir Putin, as well as the White House and that revolving door that we've been seeing this week. Matthew, thank you so much for that analysis, and uh, thanks for being with us. And uh, coming up, U.S. Secretary of State.